Welcome to episode 14 from MOSIF's APIs over IPA's podcast network. I'm Lawrence Ebringer, your host today and the Chief Marketing Officer of MOSIF, the API observability platform. Joining me is Eric Wilde, prolific YouTuber, author, standards contributor, catalyst at Axway, and most recently guest lecturer at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. Eric's been working in web technologies and APIs for most of his career. Although his background is in computer science, he believes that technology is rarely the factor holding back organizations. So now he focuses on helping with strategy to ensure companies succeed. Welcome, Eric. Where in the world do we find you? Thanks, thanks for the warm welcome, Larry, and thanks for having me. Right now, uh, you find me actually in Berkeley because I was planning on attending an on-campus course here for four days, like the first four days of this week. But uh, well, like so many things, it, like last minute it turned into an online thing, but I'm still here. So yes, I'm in the East Bay and, and I think you're somewhere down on the peninsula, right? I'm just actually across the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. Okay. Berkeley's quite a change from your, your usual home. Where, where do you domicile for most of the year? I live in Zurich now. I used to live in Berkeley for quite a while. Um, I used to um, work um, at, at Berkeley, but we moved to Zurich a couple of years ago, but we still like to come back here because it's just such a lovely place. Right, that is very true. That is very true. So um, jumping right in, uh, you and the Three Musketeers recently <laughs> released a new edition of the seminal work, Continuous API Management. Besides the cover's color photo, what's new and how has the API ecosystem changed in the last three years since the first edition? That's a, that's a good question. Uh... So what's new is to some extent, you could say that by now what happens is that we have to less and less tell people why APIs matter and that they are important and, and how to design APIs, so to speak. But we have to more and more talk about how to do that at scale, right? Like, like a good friend of mine, um, Isabel Mani, in, in some podcasts, she said, um, APIs are popping up like mushrooms left and right. And I think that to some extent is true. I think in more and more organizations, you do see that, of course, they are using APIs. Everybody's using APIs. Right? You, you cannot use computers nowadays without using a lot of APIs. Um, but managing those and also figuring out how do I get to the APIs that actually drive value for an organization, not just we have APIs, so probably good things will happen, but also understanding what is a good API, what is maybe not such a great API, how do I get my teams to actually design good APIs, how do I support them with a platform. So all of these things I think we, we see still momentum picking up in the industry in terms of understanding that APIs are not the only thing you need, but they can be a limiting factor. So it's important to really manage that and not just hope for the best. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, what a great segue um, to one of your pinned tweets, which reads, it's more important to build APIs for the right things than, than it is to build the right APIs for things. Not, I mean, not only is that a tongue twister, but it's a little bit difficult to unpack. Could you unpack it for, for us and tell, you, tell us what, what you mean by it? Sure, sure. Um, so I think one of the important things about an API is to understand is really just the interface, right? An API is the delivery mechanism for a capability. And sometimes I think us in the API space, we overestimate the importance of the delivery over what is being delivered. And what I mean by that is saying that if you have the nicest API in the world, wonderfully documented, perfectly designed, using all the right HTTP methods and doing all these things right, but it, it provides access to a capability that nobody has a need for, that API doesn't make any sense. It may be a beautiful thing to look at, 
aesthetically, but it certainly will not drive any business value. On the other hand, if you have a super valuable business capability that has maybe not the greatest API, but one that people can somehow live with, that will be much more valuable. So in the end, I think it's more important to at least very, at the very first step to think about what is it that I'm designing an API for before you jump right into which HTTP method do we use and you know all these kind of things. And I think sometimes we really get to focus on that, that technical part of the design and we don't really focus enough on what we are actually designing as a product and not so much just as its delivery, right? And I think the recent books and uh, just, I think we have a, a nice wave of books that got published, right? So Micah Munson just published one. Um, there was one by James Higginbotham recently, right? Um, there's one by uh, the API Handyman, right? And, and all of these books, I think now are focusing on the whole process, not just like, what do you do technically, but how do I actually design the right thing? And I think we are understanding that more and more, but it's still something that I think we have to focus on and make sure that that part of the design is an important step. And we are very careful with that before we jump into the technical details. Yeah, very interesting, yeah. So um, it, it's um, interesting that when, we sign up with new um, customers. Um, classically, um, the CEO is the product man and the product, um, the business case and all of the issues involved in making the complete product is far more important, we see, than actually implementing the API platform um, in the right way. So it's your analysis of the product manager having a very important and strategic role uh, in API platforms is uh, something that we see as well in the in our customer base. And it is, I think, in the end, right? It is really important to think about like what is the value that I'm producing, and and some of the examples that are used all the time, right? Like Twilio and Stripe and all these things. I mean, I like these examples as well, but in the end, Stripe is not as successful as they are because their API is good. They also are, right? But Stripe is successful because everybody needs payment services and they provided an API for that, right? That, that's the main reason. <laughs> and then they also did a good job at designing that product, right? But without that initial idea of thinking about probably everybody needs payment services and nobody wants to do it themselves. So why not have a good API for that, right? That was the, the, the thing that turns them into the, the company they are today. And then they just executed well on that, which is also important, right? But that's step two. Very, very true, very true. Yeah, I mean, I think there are a lot of examples out there where um, you might have a great implementation, but you don't necessarily have a, a great business case to justify your company. And even though, you know, we live in, we're, we're in a very frothy, uh, point in time in the API space, um, I think the market and investors still look for revenue and traction in the marketplace as opposed to a, a really glossy, well-designed API implementation. Yeah, it, it, that's the thing, right? I, again, right, like this week, I was just like four days, I basically spent at the business school here. And um, I mean, they understand that APIs are important. Um, because there's a lot of business going through APIs. But when they look at APIs, right, they don't get excited about, well, do they use HTTP post in the right way? Right? Right. They ask the questions is like, well, is there a business for that? It's like, what's your business model? How are you going to build a sustainable business around delivering that thing as a service? And then maybe you should also design it well on a technical level, but that's really not the main thing, right? It's important but it's not the main thing. And it's not definitely not the only thing that we should focus on. Right, right. I, we recently had on our podcast, um, a, uh, the lead API product person at a large enterprise software company. And her task was to really come up with the um, whole plan of implementing some of their functionality over an API. 
Some of their customers were asking for it, but that wasn't enough justification. And it's interesting, it was interesting talking to her that um, the most important aspect of getting this right was that primarily it had to be a center of revenue. It had to have something that moved the needle for the executive C-suite team to say, yes, this is worth investing in. Yeah. And if you do it well, right, you can, you can use the API also to understand a little bit what people are more and less interested. So like a little while ago, I talked with uh, Tanya Vlaovic, who I think now is at Salesforce. He used to be at eBay back then. And, um, and she told the story, right, where like for eBay, it was important to have an API, but initially they thought, well, the API will be important for people to maybe look for items and do these kind of things, which, which they are. But what turns out, what drove much more value was that the API now drives the most value by large companies putting their excess inventory onto eBay, right? And they do that through an API. And they need an API because, of course, right, they have to sell, I don't know, like 100,000 pairs of shoes. And, um, and you need an API to make sure that this inventory gets from wherever you are into eBay. Right? And, 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 under, and, and having an initial set of APIs and then understanding that, hey, this seems to be something that really drives value and then putting more effort into that, right? That, that is a good way to understand that we have to figure out what is really driving business and then we kind of can reallocate our resources in that direction. Right, uh, very, very salient point, very interesting. So a slight non sequitur and really to jump from the business case to more of the underlying technology and understanding technology in general. I um, really liked your YouTube uh, 12 minute explainer on how the internet works, where you explain IP, TCP, SSL, and UDP. Why um, uh, share with us why you think uh, such an understanding is important for API professionals? So what I think is important to understand really at a certain level, at least how this whole API stuff really works under the hooks. And of course, you don't have to understand like everything down to glass fiber. And I mean, at that point, at me, I also have no idea how those things work. Um, but I think it's important to really understand the basic mechanics so that you also understand some of the risks and some of the things that may happen, right? So for example, that you can get delays, you can get, depending on the technologies, right? You can get certain, um, you can get duplications of things. Of course, always APIs can kind of cut out, right? So I think it is important to go a little bit deeper than just understanding HTTP and JSON and to understand like, what is that built on? So show me at least the foundation of that, right? And the foundation of that then would be TCP IP. And I think that also helps, for example, because then you become more aware of the fact that things might fail, right? A lot of things that we still see, I think, is that too much designs in the API space are just built on the happy path, assuming that everything will always go right, right? And you see a lot of applications that actually, if things do not go right, they fail miserably. And you, you can easily say that, well, that would not have been necessary, right? By a little bit better understanding how things can fail, you would be able to have a more robust application by just taking that, that into account. And I think this is important for somebody who works with that, right? And takes APIs as the tooling that they work with to assemble pieces to understand this is how things can go wrong, right? I understand that they can go wrong and how can they go wrong? And then I can better design for those cases. And I think designing for failure becomes more and more important, right? Just recently, we, we had this article from Gartner predicting that in 2025, I think they said, organizations will depend on three times as many external dependencies through APIs as they, as they have today, mm. right? And that will mean more and more that you depend on others, which is good because you can assemble things, so that's nice, but you also have to manage those dependencies responsibly. And 
maybe build things so that if that thing fails, I still do at least part of my job, right? And, and I think that understanding sometimes is still something where we need a little bit more um, foundation to really understand what can go wrong so that we just design a little bit more resilient and robust systems. Mm. So on that, on that subject, do you, um, do you have a laundry list of popular API styles that you would choose or you, that you would highlight um, above others? I have these five styles, right, that I talk about when I give an overview of styles where you have the resource-oriented style, the hypermedia style, you have the RPC, like the good old um, function-oriented function calls, and then you have query-oriented styles such as GraphQL and you have event-based APIs. In the end, I think um, APIs are just a tool, right? They're the, the, the tooling that allows us to build new things out of existing building blocks that are connected through a network. And better understanding what kind of tool is a good thing in which, for which design, for which purpose, that's, that's I think, a good thing to do. So this whole fundamentalism around like REST is always the right thing, or GraphQL is always the right thing, or event base is always the right thing. I think we're slowly getting away from that a little bit, and that's good. Um, Mostly what I try to tell people is like, be, be less fundamentalist and better understand that there are different styles. They are not inherently good or bad. They just have different constraints around them and better understanding how they work. And maybe also better understanding in which case, which style may be a better choice. I think that turns you into better designer because in the end, a designer should not just always say, I'm always doing things this way. Right? As a designer, you should be able to understand that you have to design for a problem and for people who are faced with that problem, and you have to give them a solution that works well for that context. Mm. Very interesting. Yes. There are a, a multiplicity of styles and implementation um, procedures that um, it seems more, more and more difficult as an API platform provider that we have to support. But I suppose that is, that is the nature of the beast. Talking of um, big changes in API platforms and uh, third party solutions that one, one has to be aware of, um, tell us your perspective on API security. You know, why is it important and, and how, can, how can we facilitate um, the gold standard for security? And also, um, what is your perspective on the recently standardized uh, latest version of FHIR, F-H-I-R, uh, for APIs? Okay, let's get started with security. So security, of course, is super important, right? APIs always provide a, some, some way to interact with your system landscape. It may be read only, but even then it's probably some kind of risk that you're exposing, right? So, so there is always the ability that this could be misused in some mm -hmm. shape or form. And the very starting point for good API security is to just understand which APIs that you even have, right? And it is amazing to me, like I work with a lot of really big organizations and whenever we talk to the people in those organizations, they have no idea which APIs they have, right? There are, there are people in the organization who build APIs and publish APIs because they just need to get some job done. And they maybe are not aware of the fact that maybe there is a platform where they could secure it, or they just say, ah, that's good enough. It just talks to my application. So how bad could it be? And, and, and there's all these kind of missing practices sometimes around understanding that every API is a potential security risk, right? And you have to think about what's the worst thing that could happen. And that worst thing often actually could be pretty bad. And, and it's not like security is, is such a super complicated thing. It's just a set of practices that people need to understand that they have to apply those practices. You can provide them with pretty good tooling to make sure that they don't have to do that much themselves. But it's still something within an organization where 
I think we're still oftentimes seeing that it's not it's not done in a disciplined enough way, right? And, and like sometimes it's it's pretty amazing. I've seen organizations where at some point, for example, they just closed certain um, ports in their firewalls, right? Basically said, oh, for a little while, let's not pass pass through traffic that goes through certain ports. And then they just basically wait for reports coming in about, hey, this application stopped working, right? <laughs> and then people understand it's like, oh, there seems to be an API there, right? But nobody ever told anybody, just people just created it and it runs there. It may not be secured at all, right? And, and nobody even knew that this is there. And it's it's very important that you find this application before some hacker does, right? And and this is like this whole space of observability that we see that is exploding right now, right? I think that very much is also fueled by this that sometimes you have to observe things just to plainly understand what is even happening in my network, right? And the bigger the organization gets, sometimes the less organizations are actually knowing what is happening. And, and I think this is this kind of rather basic aspect of security is almost more important than, than the details of how do you do it on a technical level. I think we those pieces we have in play pretty well. Once you know that you have an API, how to secure it, how to provide tooling for doing that, but just knowing that you have APIs and which ones they are, and who should get access to it and all these kind of things. I think that sometimes almost is the, the trickier part because there's so much unknown stuff going on on your network. Right, very true, very true. We had uh, Alyssa Knight on um, recently on our podcast and uh, she was talking about um, man in the middle intercepts and how to avoid that with APIs and um, one of her big her big takeaway, which which really underlines your issue of just know what you which APIs you have out there. Um, her big takeaway is you can you can solve ninety percent of this problem by making sure that um, when you authenticate a user, that doesn't necessarily mean they have access to everything. And when she hacked people's APIs. Um, she found that I could be authenticated, but then by changing some of my tokens, just one or two characters, I could now gain access to a whole other suite, other users set of, of API payload material. And she said it was amazing. Um, just, I mean, she's published this. She did it for medical applications and also banking applications. And she said, it's amazing the number of people who, because they think, oh, well, this, this person's authenticated. Now they can have access to anything. Yeah, and I think that is number one on the OWASP security list, right? right. It's, it's object level access, right? It's like people just assume that you have access to something, so here's everything. Right? <laughs> and um, yeah, there's j just going through the, like the OWASP top 10, right? That already is in lots of organizations. You will find that, yeah, you know, we actually have, not all of our applications are doing so well. Right, very true, very true. Going back to um, something you touched upon, um, which was that there is a big movement now for API observability. Um, why don't you give me your definition of what is the difference between API observability and API monitoring? And how is observability, why is observability more important these days than just pure monitoring? I will not give you definitions because I would need to think about that for a little bit longer. Okay. <laughs> um, but I think at least in, in the way that I use it, and I, I think most people would use it, would be to say that monitoring typically is something that you put in place if you have an API. So it's a rather technical and specific component that you put there and say, you know, let's, let's count the number of accesses or whatever it is, right? It's like, it's a very specific kind of layer of, also observation, let's put it like this, right? But it's, it's more specific around, like let's really look at something that we know. And I think observability is much more rooted and with the tools that we see that, that are coming out, right? It's much more rooted in this idea of, we know there's stuff going on, but we don't exactly know what it is, how it behaves, maybe what even what we have. So we observe the environment, we observe what's happening and we actually learn from that. And it's not 
so much just learning by counting things such as monitoring right but we we learn that we have certain apis that we didn't really know we we learn that there are certain ways how these apis are being used that we didn't think they were getting used right so it's i would say it's a much deeper insight there's also much much fancier technology involves involved that really tries to not just count bytes but to really get a meaningful understanding of what's going on and and to help you better understand what's going on and then you can you can do all these things right where you can also reverse engineer like uh, phil phil sturgeon just recently um, published a piece right where it's like about inferring open api information from just monitoring traffic right? or observing if it's observing traffic right but these kind of things which i would say are a much much more insightful way of looking at traffic than just the, the, the rather simple monitoring that we often have in place right very true i mean slightly self-serving but i work for a api observability company and we're always pushing the fact yeah you can count server uptime and latency and issues on geolocation but really you get a whole bunch more business value by actually delving into the nuance of what's in your payload and how your customers are actually using it that yeah. seems to have an awful lot more value yeah. so very interesting segue uh, into um, measuring the value of apis how do you how would you gauge whether your api is successful and how if it's not successful, um, what metrics do you think are important or what um, conclusions can you draw from what you're monitoring and observing that mm -hmm. could turn it into a performant API? Um, so let, let me go out a limb here and say like an API cannot be successful, right? The thing that can be successful is, is a capability, is a product, is something that you are actually delivering through an API, right? So in the end, and I, I have this video, I have to point it out because it's one of my favorite ones where I talk about beer and my, the analogy I'm giving is that, um, right, the, the API is the delivery mechanism. So it's like a bottle or a can, it's the way how you get the beer, but what really matters in the end is the beer, right? But the beer is not the delivery mechanism. There's a difference in that. And I think that is something that is still important to really understand that, um, the API, you don't, don't focus too much on the API, right? Just the API is just the mechanics to get things going. So in the end, you have to think about like, what, what is the business that I'm trying to, to do with this? Like, what is the actual capability that I'm working with? And then that would be more like somebody who does product management, right? And who's right. really, who, who is responsible for designing that product, delivering that product, making sure it's getting used, monitoring how it's getting used, figuring out does it, does it generate more revenue than it costs us to, to run it. And, and to that extent, right, I think like pure API metrics are just like a relatively small part of that, right, where you can see it's like, okay, and here's maybe an additional way of how we provide access to this capability. But in the end, what really matters is just like, do we, do we drive business through this, right? So I think this whole idea of an API having value is maybe interesting, but mostly it's really about, do I, do I push the right things in the right direction? Very interesting, yes. Yeah, it's important, again, going back to uh, Jeannie Horitz from SAS, uh, her perspective on uh, creating APIs in and existing enterprise software companies. So your API has to be a center of revenue. It can't just be a nice, nice to have or because a product manager wanted to put it out there. The business case and the business metrics are the most important thing you, you have to get right. And there are like, just sorry, but because it's so dear to my heart, right? I mean, there are these cases where I've seen companies basically and so one of the things they did was basically really counting API accesses, right? And, and this was not just not so interesting, it almost um, created like bad incentives because 
instead of creating better APIs that would be more granular, so then you can get more stuff done with one APIs, they were incentivized to basically have, no, we have these 25 APIs. So if you want to get anything done, you have to call all 25 of them, right? And then say, well, that's good, right? We have 25 API calls here. So that, and it's like, no, that's probably not good, but I understand why this is going on and somebody should stop this from happening. Right, absolutely. Count, uh, yeah, look at the right metrics. Don't just, don't just count metrics for the sake of metrics sake. Yep. Absolutely. So my final question, crystal ball gazing. What does the future of, um, and I you know, don't want to use this now as a noun, but um, as a standalone uh, concept, but what does the future of APIs and the whole API ecosystem look like? So I think what will happen in the API space is that we will see there will be better bridges between the technical aspects of APIs and, and the not so technical aspects. I think right now we still have not enough of a, an overlap and a smooth transition between the more business minded side of things, really understanding what are the capabilities that we should have, what are the capabilities we should make available. And then also thinking about, and now do we have APIs for that? Like, should we invest in building those, right? And then saying, okay, somebody should design those things, but we also need somebody to think about which things should be designed, right? Going back to the building the right things and building them right. And I think we almost, I think at some point we have overdone it a little bit with the developers, 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 because of course developers are super important, but they also have to develop the right stuff. And I think, building better bridges to make sure that what is getting built is understood by everybody, right? That I think is important. And I, in part, I think, and, and I, I found that super interesting this week that, you know, when you talk to companies here in the Bay Area, of course they are like very technically minded, right? And there you don't have to explain that much what APIs are and so forth. But on the other hand, if I go back home to Switzerland and talk to organizations in, in Germany and Switzerland, right, who are not so natively digital, there the divide between the business side and the digital side or the, the IT side, right, is, it's still much bigger. And I think crossing that divide and making sure that everybody understands what's going on, everybody understands what needs to happen, I think that is something where we still have to develop better tooling, do more education, so that in the end, everybody really understands what is it that we all should be doing and how can I contribute, right? And it's not just developers who are contributing, it's everybody. And I think that is something where we hopefully will see big changes. Great, great, yep, yep. Totally agree that there has to be a, a team effort and there's more than just focusing on a great developer experience um, to get your product out there and get it successful in the marketplace. So um, where can our listeners hear more from you? Um, and obviously, you know, please give us an unadulterated plug of your latest <laughs> excellent um, publication. Sure. Uh, sadly, I cannot hold, hold up our book because I don't have it with me. Um, but of course, yeah, everybody should check out our latest um, book, the Continuous API Management Second Edition. We published it just a month ago, basically, or two months ago, I think, by now. Um, so that one, I hope everybody finds interesting. It, it is specifically about APIs and API landscapes, because we thought when we started the whole initiative around it that this is really where the world is going, and it, I think it continues to go that way, so that's good for us. And in terms of where you can find me, of course, you can always find me on Google. <laughs> But the main outlets that I have these days is my, my YouTube channel. So just put my name into YouTube and you'll find my channel. It's called Getting APIs to Work. And I have a lot of interesting guests there who talk about their API practices, their, their experiences in the API space. So check that out. And other than that, you'll find me in my usual places such as Twitter and LinkedIn. Great, great. Well, it was a pleasure speaking to you today, Eric. Thank you very much for your insights. I'm sure your, our listeners will find them educational and uh, very useful. Thank you so much for having me, Larry. And I hope this is not the last time that we're doing this. I always like talking about API things and where the space is going. Certainly, certainly. Like, love, love to do it again. So until next time, thank you very much, Eric. <laughs>